Hi guys, Steve Rowe here. Um, today I'd like to perform a tool review of some new accessories available for the Festool MFT multifunction table. Uh, these devices, they're, they're bench dogs. They're manufactured by Fine Tool Works in British Columbia, Canada, and they are offered now by Ultimate Tool Supply in Burnaby, Canada. And um, for as a full disclosure, these products were provided to me by Ultimate Tool Supply for the purpose of this review, and I would like to thank them for that. I've been playing around with these for several days now and have come to really be impressed by the by the capabilities these offer. Okay, I'm not gonna bore anybody with a long drawn out explanation of what bench dogs are for. But to explain the there are the two sets of dogs on the left, these are called the top dogs. They obviously have a, a taller face and they're taller. I've got the short dogs, which are obviously have the shoulders that are shorter. What I like about these is if you I work with a lot of 12 millimeter Baltic birch ply, which is just under half an inch, and my dog is sits below that, which if you look at my festo clamping elements, I uh, I have abraded the tops of those on numerous occasions. And the third are the hot dogs. And these are these are used for attaching to the T-slot in your, in your guide rail so that you can align this to the grid on your table. Uh, these are quality products. They are made of anodized aluminum. And in my opinion, I've, I've got several other uh, brands of bench dogs, which I all like. They're all quality products. But these particular bench dogs take the best qualities of all of those, in my opinion, and roll them up into one package. Now, first thing you note is, is that the dogs themselves have a flat face milled in them, and these flat faces happen to be flush with the shaft that fits down into the MFT holes. More on that later. If you prefer the round dog, round face, then you've got the round face option. And the third is it has a eight millimeter drilled and threaded all the way through the dog. With this, this M8 thread, it enables you to use the Festool clamping knobs or other eight millimeter knob and you can clamp the dog securely to from the underside of your MFT table. Being threaded all the way through gives you the thread on the top so it gives you other clamping options or additional clamping options that you may or may not already have where you can and this is an adjustable eight millimeter handle with a with a uh, commercial clamping device that I robbed off my uh, T-slot on my drill press. Or if you don't have that, if you don't have one of these devices, you can also use a, a shop-made uh, clamping element. So this gives you a lot of flexibility. The shaft fits into the holes very nicely. They're easy to put in. They're easy to take out. There's minimal wiggle room. I have three requirements for any tool or accessory that I've got and these are probably similar to what most woodworkers have. The first is it's got to be simple and easy to set up. My second rule is it's got to be accurate. If I set this thing up or a 90 degree cut and or a 45 degree or a 30 degree or a 60 degree cut I expect to be I expect those those angles and third I expect it to be repeatable. When I break this system down, put it away, come back to it, I expect to be able to quickly set it back up and achieve the same results. I've checked this, I've broken it down multiple times, set it back up, and I have found that, that these MFT accessories satisfy all of those requirements. There's one thing I'd like to point out with respect to the, the flat face being flush with the post. Uh, that might be a convenience item for some, but what I can see is is that being flat with a post, when you put your guide 
or your uh, hot dog on your rail and align that, you could actually use this dog that goes on your rail as one of your one of your stops for for cutting angles. Okay, so I'm getting ready to square up the rail, and basically what you need to do this are the two dogs that you're going to be using. I guess it doesn't really matter which ones. So what I'll do is I'll just put those in the I'll just put those in the table here. I'll put my hot dogs that attach to the bottom of the rail to the side. <clears throat> and what you'll need is a precision square. I'm going to use this and I'm going to put the hot dogs in the T-slot on the guide rail. And I'm just going to set this up to where, let's see here, dogs are here and I can position this thing anywhere along there. And I'm just going to tighten one of the two. Oh, the the edge furthest away from me first because the other ones will be easier to reach. And then I'll take my precision square. I'll need to make sure my flat faces are flat. And I guess you really don't need to use the flat faces as long as you don't have a flat face and a round face all in the same square. <clears throat> Before I actually square this up and tighten it, I've tightened one hot dog. So what I'm going to do is take my precision square, keep them up against my, my dogs, and I'm going to align my guide rail to this square. And my squaring is complete. That's all it takes to square the dog, square your fence to the to the rail. And now what my rail is, it is set up to where the grid hole on my table is squared with the dogs and the rail. Now, I drop my guide rail on there and I'm ready to, to make a cut. But before I make the cut, I'm going to pull this off and I'm going to describe how to make a five-sided cut. And the reason I do a five-sided cut is, is it gives me the most accurate means of measuring the angle that I've got. And the way I do that I make five cuts. The first cut makes a straight edge. I rotate that to where my dog, or you, if you're aligning a fence, you could do that there as well. Then I'll make my second cut. Then I'll rotate it around, take the always going, the cut I just made up against the fence of the dogs. This one will be my third cut. And then I'll rotate that around again and then I'll make my fourth cut. Make one more revolution or rotation and get to the point where your first cut is where the saw would cut again and this this is where you will make the fifth cut and the longer you have this piece for this final cut the more accurate you will be able to determine your angle. So I'm going to cut off roughly a half you know a, a a one inch to one and a half inch piece and I'm going to make my fifth cut. And if all of these angles, if, if the angle between the fence and the dogs are a perfect 90 degrees, I will have a perfect square. And this cut off, because this, is, this was my first cut, by this point I should have everything square if it was perfect. My fifth cut, I'm going to take the off cut, I'll measure the leading uh, or the leading edge and the trailing edge, if I have a perfect 90 degree angle, both of those measurements should be identical. So without further ado, let's do the five-sided cut. Okay, this was the edge against the dogs. 
So I've got a width of 26.28 millimeters on my offcut. So I'm writing that number down. Now I'm going to the tra trailing edge here and my number is 26.72 millimeters. I've got 26.28 millimeters and 26.72 millimeters on the other end. So my difference between the two, so I've got 0 0.44 millimeters. This is the total error for four total cuts. So I, in order to get the error in one cut, I need to divide that by four. So my actual error is 0 0.11 millimeters. Okay, so in my single cut, for out of square from this edge to the opposite edge, I am out 0 0.11 millimeters. That is roughly just a little more than the thickness of a sheet of paper. So if I wanted to calculate the angle, how far off I am, this particular piece is 365 millimeters. So I've got 365 millimeters and I've got an error of 0.11 millimeters. So if I do take the arc tangent of this, tangent to the minus one, and I know I can't do that in my head. Let's see if I can come up here. That is how that is how far off of 90 degrees I am. 0 0.017 degrees. Okay, so which way am I out? Am I out? Again, I mark my reference point. The tra the edge further away from the dogs is the larger dimension. So what that tells me is is that my angle is slightly less than 90 degrees. Okay, the cut that I demonstrated, we were at 89.983 degrees. I had uh, actually done several other cuts and these are the results and this was after breaking the system down completely, resetting, resquaring everything and these are the three angles I got. I got 90.007, 89.969, and 89.983 degrees. The average difference off of 90 was 0 0.018 degrees. That's barely measurable. Uh, the only way you can measure this is using the five-sided cut. If you put a protractor or measure the diagonals on the squares, you will, you will, they would be exactly 90 degrees. That's, that's your conclusion. The reason for the five-sided cut was to determine the accuracy and repeatability of this only. I would not recommend doing a five-sided cut as a routine operation. I use that really exclusively for machine setup. And the only reason I'd use that for this uh, demonstration was to check the accuracy of the machining, the guide rail, the guide rail track, the table, everything together as a system. This is how accurate I was able to get this. Uh, as far as the, the bench dogs, and the hot dogs that attach to the rail from, from Fine Tool Works. They're just awesome. They, they met all my criteria, which were, were easy to set up. They were accurate and they were repeatable. Now, they made it, my sample of three cuts may not be a statistically significant uh, sample, but it's enough to convince me that, that this system meets all those criteria. I would also like to point out that I took these pieces, all the cutoffs, and measured across the diagonals, which is what we'll normally use for measuring square as opposed to the five-sided cut. And every one of these measured the same. The other thing I did was take a, a bevel protractor. This has a vernier scale on it to, that'll measure to the nearest five minutes of angle. That happens to be 0 0.083 degrees, which is greater than the results that I was able to achieve out of, out of this setup with a precision square. 
and every one of these by this by this measurement every angle measured 90 degrees I didn't see any deviation whatsoever on, on the veneer scale so from that standpoint I I, I have no uh, qualms about recommending the fine tool works top dogs the short dogs and the hot dogs to achieve the results uh, that we all expect I would again like to thank uh, Claremont's Ultimate Tool Supply in Burnaby, British Columbia, which is in Canada, and uh, for providing these dogs for the purpose of this review. This is not really the completion of uh, the video series because the other, the next part is really a demonstration. The, the five-sided cut, I think, is sufficient to demonstrate the accuracy from, from cutting. But I'll, the, the upcoming part two of this video is really a how-to, and I'm going to demonstrate two things. One is I'm going to use this system with a rail and a plunge router to mill dados. The second part of it is that I'm going to use a 32 millimeter hole drilling system and show you how to use these these bench dogs and pretty much the same type setup method. It has a few other uh, things you'll have to consider, but to mill 32 millimeter system holes and they've been accurate and I've been quite pleased with that. Uh, I hope you'll stick around for that, but I do thank you for watching this video. I appreciate any comments or suggestions or questions you might have. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in part two.